You're listening to Fighting Game Volley. It's the number one podcast for low-level player opinions. Yeah, that makes sense. Round one. Hello, hello, hello to all of my mashers, grapplers, set play psychopaths, Wi-Fi warriors, O2ers, tournament organizers, everybody else in the entire FGC, scope, spectrum, whatever you want to call it. I've been away for a while, I'm finally back, and I know every time I say I find, I'm find i finally back, I take another like month-long break because I get swamped with a bunch of other stuff, but this time, I swear, I promise it, because I'm making some changes, uh, and we, we back, I'm actually locking in. And I'm sitting down in the chair, finally. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. But first, as always, how, how have you guys been? How, how y'all been? I haven't been here in a while. I've not sat in the chair. I've not had the chance to actually, like, pop out and come out with a new episode. Every time I try to, like, stuff always happens. I, I have tried to record this 27th episode i think like four or five times over and every time i do either something new comes up or like i have to scrap it for something else or i'm just not feeling it and i have to like throw it away and do another thing this episode has been like cursed for a good while and we're we're gonna break that today we're breaking that today we're starting off fresh we're starting off with the new year i wanted to do a whole lot of things during the start of the new year but didn't have the time to just didn't have the opportunity to but with the end of the month and everything and with this idea sort of sitting in the back of my head for a while i thought it would be good to do a a nice little january recap a, a little january recap of the entire first month of you know january 2024 just to see all of the releases that we've had all of the tournaments that have been playing and you know just like also have a look into the future to see what else we're expecting for the time being and just you know like see see what the future holds for right now so if y'all are ready for that, sit back, relax, get some snacks. If you're driving, uh, keep keep listening to my silky, smooth voice. I, I don't know. Uh, if you're doing homework, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm here to pass time and ramble in your ear about stuff that, I, I, that really does mean a lot to me. So I suggest we just get started right off the bat. By right off the bat, I mean let's start by talking about the game releases and all of the updates that we have had throughout this month. So... One of the, or I guess two of the big, big things that have come out, and I'm probably, I should talk about it in uh, release order, but honestly, this is so big, I feel like it would be stupid not to talk about it first. Tekken 8. Tekken 8 is dropped, it's finally out for the public, you can buy it now for I think like $80, you can buy the special edition for $100. Tekken 8's here. Uh, my general consensus right now, like just playing the game a tiny bit and like actually learning the system mechanics and whatnot, and this also being like my first real Tekken. I did play Tekken 7 a tiny bit, but never to the point where I was like actively understanding or like having fun with the game. Uh, giving it a tiny bit of time, playing the demos, uh, and like playing the game like uh, like fully on launch. I, I I like it. I kind of like it. I think it's good. It's still very much like a curve, especially from or especially if you're more uh, used to playing 2D fighters. Like it is most definitely a curve, and I'm still very much trying to learn that curve. And with no like crutch characters like Eliza or Geese or Akuma, I sort of have to learn that curve like the same as everyone else. I do think it's nice that they do have this sort of modern controls thing. Uh, but I have my own gripes on that, more specifically about, like, people using it just so that they don't have to learn things, especially if you play, like, a Mishima, like, uh, Reina or Kazuya, like, and you do the special mode and then the special, I think, like, it's triangle or, like, whatever the air combo is, it does, like, an automatic electric, which I think is wild, and not, like, an electric, like, a, um... Q or not a QCB, like a DP motion, like I'm not going to sugarcoat it, and then you get like the regular one, no, like you get like the enhanced electric version, like every time you press that button, and even though you do get that whilst you're like still in heat mode, which I'm going to talk about in like a tiny bit, I still think it's kind of wild to automatically default it to be like the special version that's supposed to only have just framing, but whatever, I digress, that, I have my gripes on the, um, like modern controls mode it's sort of just the gripes that i have with modern controls mode uh that have been like showing up in fighting games to begin with it's sort of like a thing that's used to introduce new players to stuff however using it on like a more competitive level is just sort of like 
just stifle your growth essentially and not really let you see what the higher ceiling of the game like really holds in forth like you can still use it and still potentially utilize it like while still carrying on that higher knowledge but i still think you know it's not really like if you want to use it just to like mess around and like have fun by all means it's fine but if you like whipping that out in tournament i think you might need to reevaluate your standings it's not the same thing as like street fighters modern controls but it's just like an entirely different beast that i might go into uh later on when i have like more time to formulate uh my thoughts and ideas on it and like you know the longer i play the game and whatnot so that might come out soon along with another modern controls-esque um episode where i just talk about that in fold that i don't know when that'll happen it'll probably happen like maybe sometime in like february or march but that i digress we'll get to that bridge when that eventually needs to be crossed the other really big fighting game that did get announced this month you know switching gears is undernight in birth to sistema celeste now i've been singing the praises of undernight for a while you can go and look at all of the episodes that i mentioned it i always get really hype when you know undernight is when i start talking about undernight uh i forget the episode i think it was around like the 18 ish mark maybe like 17 or 18 it was around that time point where i first initially covered the um korean leak that undernight 2 system of celeste was initially dropping then you know we had the evo demo and everything i got to play that even though i'm not good at um undernight i still really much enjoyed the uh, evil beta and everything and like there was also the online demo and now that we actually have the full game right what what are my thoughts on it what are my takes well under Night's good under Night is back we finally have rollback we have three characters we have three more characters that's coming along the way i'll talk about that more in the future segment but under Night is finally back we're back we're back with rollback we're back with a new story we're back with new characters and everything um and a lot or rather the three characters that we did get um kuan surugi and kaguya i think they're all really fun i think they all add something unique and, or uh, they add a new unique and interesting take on like either whatever their archetype is or just like their whole game plan to begin with that we haven't seen in uni or sometimes just haven't you know seen in fighting games to begin with and i think all, all three of the characters are really well, they're really well made, there are sprites, animations, everything, they're all really well done, buttons are always really good, the press and everything, it, overall just like stellar 10 out of 10, like 10 out of 10 characters, 10 out of 10 like music, um, ratio once again killed it when it comes to the composing, uh, you know, just composing for the entire game in general. Man, anytime that man is in the studio, he always does like a banger job and this is no exception uh like when the beta first came out or like when the online um beta first came out i everybody was like rushing to go and get as many like on our tracks online as possible especially like with all of the character remixes and everything and they were just all singing praises to all of the new segments and everything that were added which ratio man you deserve it everything every all of the little like additions and everything that you did stellar job Ab absolutely beautiful absolutely amazing i really can't wait for any new or other tracks that we might get or just like if anything else is composed because i know that he also does compose the stuff for melty so if melty like gets any new content or, any or anything i'll be sure to also go check that out as well however despite all of this despite all of the really good music really good art really good gameplay there was a really bad thing that befell undernight that really really sucked especially with it like immediately um trying to defend itself against like a powerhouse that is tekken 8 and that was the pc port being absolutely like unplayable and it was just it was just a massacre man like i was getting um or i was seeing and hearing stories of people like that would go and try and play the game and then it was like either they had a horrible connection or like they would go and play the story mode and then it would just like for some reason crash or tab out and like it was the the pc port was essentially unplayable which makes sense when you look at things from the developer standpoint because it was being done by i think like 
system or not system zero but um all i know is that it was being done by the same group that did a another god awful pc port of an arc system fighting game i think it's like the arcana heart game if i if memory serves me right um i should have had this written down but it, it was a really it was a really bad port and it was just really not the best like on any sort of standpoint which really sucks because i was really hyped for under night 2 to like really finally have its time to shine a lot of people wanted to play it but didn't or couldn't because of the delay based netcode and when we finally got rollback netcode it just started or like a lot of the player base being on pc it just like completely stifled it and the weird thing is or not even like the weird thing the thing that like sort of sucks is like since i brought the game on my ps5 i didn't really run or i didn't run into any of these issues at all it was just like smooth sailing from time out so i was just i was over here like having a grand old time running through like the combo trials and like character stories and whatnot meanwhile i'm getting like stories and text messages from all of my friends like saying that they're either gonna refund or just like straight up oh i wasted like 40 dollars because i'm never gonna touch this again and that blows because even though fixes and everything have come out by the time i'm dropping this this should be either the 31st or the first when this comes up even though fixes have already come out for it and everything people still already refunded the game a majority of the damage has already been done and uni is probably going to go back into that like sort of niche ish but like not a thousand percent niche to the point where like you've never heard of it but still way too niche enough to it's only like a couple of p or not a couple of people but like not as big of a player base that i feel like it necessarily deserves because uni is a game where it, it really does deserve like all of the credit and everything that it gets its gameplay is always crisp all of its characters are always really like sleek and beautifully designed its art style as well always really sleek beautifully designed everything about uni screams that it is like a high tier fighting game but from day one it's sort of always just been like out the gate fighting tooth and nail to try and like earn its place in the fgc and that really it sucks but seeing similar stories like this happen from Skullgirls as well and like seeing like the fact that that game sort of gets to also have its like moments to shine especially with like tournaments like evo and everything allowing it to have that place to shine hopefully uni does or hopefully uni will get that chance to sign uh shine soon uh i hope so because apparently we will be getting the evo lineup uh soon i'll go about that or i'll talk about that more in like the future um segment as well but like hopefully we should be getting like the evo lineup soon uh if it's in the lineup then like you know praises and then like we'll actually get to see what this game is allowed to do if not then it'll most likely be a really big side tournament that a lot of people play outside of those two big games you know um tekken 8 and under night in birth 2 dropping the 25th and the 26th respectfully we had grand blue fantasy versus now i have not touched this game since uh i think december mostly because like i still haven't really found the character that's for me and also if i can't find that character i'm just not really gonna have fun and that's sort of the main thing that you want to have you know fun but grand blue it had its first dlc character and it'll it also had a lot of dlc um i forgot to like or actually no i never even had the chance to talk about this but grand blue had a whole roadmap that dropped and came out and i think it's dropping i think like four or five characters within the span of like a single year within the span of like i think six months which is absolutely insane for um side games and arcsis to even do like shout shout out shout out to them but for our first dlc character we have um on january 16th we got uh lucilius i think his name is i don't know i don't know grand blue lore all that well i haven't had the chance to like really sit down and learn it to its whole intricate parts and whatnot but uh from his design from his looks and everything uh, i'm pretty sure he's a bad guy i don't know all i know is that like i think he has some relations with um sigurd and lancelot which i don't really want to look into more all i know is that he's opposed or i'm pretty sure he's opposing main heroes grand and everything which that's okay cool whatever that that gives something to work off of um i remember seeing his gameplay trailer buttons were really big or they looked really stupid and belligerent that's really oh that's my phone 
Um, his buns were really big. They looked really stupid and belligerent. That's all I can really tell about, like, um, just his whole game plan. I have not seen anything else afterwards. Um, I didn't even see the grand blue stuff that was supposed to be dropping. Or, there isn't anything else dropping, but, uh, Frosty Frostings did happen, and I didn't even, like, get the chance to see that game happen, but... We'll, we'll talk about that later on when I go more into, like, the tournament segment and everything. Man, I'm alluding to a lot of stuff that I'm going to be talking about later. Jeez. But, overall, Lucilius, he came out. He seems cool. Um, Maybe when I eventually play the game back, or, like, in February when another character is supposed to come out, then I'll probably run into him. Or maybe he's a really bad, like, low-tier character that, like, gets zero play, and I might not play into him. Or I might not play against him. I don't know. I can't really say, I'll just let that be known for the future. And finally, we have the fraud of fraud. I, I want to go more into like why I think Mortal Kombat is like a fraudulent game, but I'll save that for later, probably like its own uh, separate segment with another person. But Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat, the only thing that we have to note is, or actually the two things that we have to note, because I was going to initially talk about this last year and then didn't get the chance to, or I didn't get the chance to, and so I'm just saving it here. Uh, we have Quan Chi, yeah, we have Quan Chi who dropped, and then we also have the cameo chameleon. Apparently, apparently, uh, the cameo is supposed to be really like cracked and crazy, and Quan Chi is really not, I wouldn't say bad, but like very goofy. And not goofy and like the haha -ha sort of goofy, but who goofy and like the haha. -ha. I can't believe like Nether Room Studios would allow this to like drop and call this a finished state. Which, once again, I don't want to get into as to why I think Undernight or not Undernight, uh, why Mortal Kombat is a, a funny man's game. But that that's all I can really talk about for Mortal Kombat. The fact that Quan Chi came out, uh, his buttons were goofy, and that. Uh, Chameleon came out, and then, like, her cameos and her sister, everything, are very crazy and whatnot. Overall, we don't really have anything, like, super, super crazy that came out in January. January, January was very much carried at the later stages of its lifespan with Tekken 8 and Undernight Inbirth, and then, sadly, the stuff with Undernight Inbirth sort of, uh, like, stifled it. So, mainly, it's been a month for, you know, Tekken 8, and Tekken 8 getting all of this time to, like, shine and flourish is very good because we're not going to be getting a lot of the stuff that's going to be able to, like, actually contend with it until later into February or, like, maybe into, like, mid-March. So, Tekken very much has has like a lot of time to like shine and do its own thing which is good for it because obviously Tekken is a part of the big three the whole reason why it was pushed back to you know this late into the game is because initially uh Harada said that they were going to drop Tekken 8 literally the same day that Street Fighter 6 was going to drop January 2nd or no not January 2nd um June 2nd and it's either June 2nd or June 6th, if I remember correctly. It was either, It's one of those days. They were going to drop it that same day, talked with Capcom, and was like, oh, well, it doesn't make sense to drop two out of the big three on the same day and then immediately have people fighting for attention, so we're going to push it back. Sadly, Undernight got caught in the crossfire with that and all of the stuff with the port, so that it, it's dying in the water. I need to find that um one skeleton meme of like the girl drowning or not drowning but like the girl like sad uh like in the pool and then it's just like the skeleton all the way up like under underwater because that that's essentially what like this whole entire i guess fiasco of you would, yeah that's what this whole entire fiasco is sort of like turned out to be it's like the fgc is very much like propping up Tekken 8, Mortal Kombat's, like, crying in the water, and then, like, Undernight Inbirth is, like, it, it's, I don't want to say it's dead on arrival, because it is very much still thriving and whatnot, shout out to the Undernight, or, like, Discord, but it's very much not in this state, or, like, it, it's on life support, essentially, it's not in the state that I feel like it should be, and that really blows, because it, it just got dealt a really bad hand, and from this, we sort of learned to, if you're gonna port a game on the PC, don't use, like, um, Cyclone Zero. I think that's, like, the developer company. They should have known from the first point to not. If they, like, remembered about the really bad Arcana Heart, um, like, port that they did. But I guess they forgot and was like, oh, well, that was a fluke. 
So that's pretty much it for this month of January. The main standout is, like I've been saying, Tekken 8, because that game had it inside. Like, it has as much time as it, like, could possibly could take to flourish. If you're playing Tekken 8, let me know. If you see me on Tekken 8, let me know. If you got some, some tips or tricks you want to, like, slap my way, I would very much appreciate it. Because this game is fun, but it's still very much, like... It is hard to understand and learn. I feel like I'm slowly getting there and I'm slow. I'm slowly putting my ingredients together. You know, I'm, I'm setting up the pot to start cooking and whatnot. But I don't I don't fully, you know, I, I don't have like my chef's hat on just yet. I'm getting to that point where I might, but not I don't have it on just yet. But yeah, Tekken 8 so far has been really fun. Undernight also very fun. Sadly, you know, it didn't get its time to shine and it hopefully it will soon. Um, Grand Blue, it got its character release, uh, one of its, I think, like, four character releases, and then Mortal Kombat, it got another character release that nobody really cares about or talked about, which is wild. Round 2! So, January was pretty good in terms of what we had for, like, tournament runs and everything. Mainly, a lot of the things that we were all privy to was the Capcom Pro Tour, or the CPT, as I will be abbreviating it as. As the CPT lineup for, you know, the Capcom, uh, like, World or Capcom Cup, which is going to be coming up real soon, it, it was wild. The main, like, two standout ones that I really want to focus on for, like, this, I guess I would call it, like, a little mini segment was the CPT G or, whoa, I can't speak, the CPT Japan one and the uh, CPT USA, um, I think it's the East, both of those were probably, like, the craziest um, CPT runs that, like, we've seen in a while, mostly because of the, like, sheer fact that both the Japan and the US East regions are both, like, probably some of the really, or probably some of the strongest regions, like, to date for Street Fighter, like, period, as a lot and i mean like a lot of top players come from either the east side of the us or from japan and there's sort of like no in between and i could go off and like start naming a bunch of like sets and everything and all of the like really hype moments and everything that like happened but honestly if i were to just start talking about it i'd be doing it a disservice because in order to really like grasp the scope of how huge of an event like this entire I, I, I wouldn't even know what to call it, but, like, just the fact that, like, this entire thing was, like, such a, a huge, like, event, like, the whole, the whole CBT lineup was, like, probably some of the best, like, Street Fighter that we've seen in a while, and the crazy thing is, is, like, this was only the qualifiers for the bigger event that is the Capcom Pro Tour that's going to be coming out soon, which, once again, I'll talk about later on, but the, the CPT Japan and the CPT um us east runs they were absolutely insane i think it was knuckle do and i forgot who won the japan like um cpt i know it was a luke player and i know it was like an older luke player who um played back in street fighter 5 as like most of the other pros did um that like took time off to come back and like refine the game and then absolutely cleaned up but all I all I can really do and all I can really recommend is that you go and watch both the um Japan and the US East like runs. I think they're like around like two to four ish hours if memory serves correctly. Like plus since all of the VODs are up, you can just go skip through, see whatever looks interesting. But I really do recommend if you have the time and you really enjoy Street Fighter a lot, like high level Street Fighter, I really do you um recommend that you go and watch Ooh, excuse me. I really do recommend that you go and watch, like, um, that entire thing in its entirety. Because, like, it's some really good Street Fighter that is played. Probably some of the best Street Fighter that we will see for, like, I want to say the next, like, half month until we start getting, like, updates for the game and whatnot. That should be coming out soon. Um, especially, like, from players like Punk, Ending Walker, Paladin, um, Tokido. Daigo had an insane run. Dude got knocked into losers, um, like before we even got into top eight and then from that point forward he just kept he kept going and going it's daigo so obviously but like that man kept going and going he did not stop he ended up going like two and eight which is av or i think it was like either it's either two or eight or two or eleven memory is not like the the best thing to come to me right now but like daigo went absolutely insane sadly he didn't drop it and like it's or sadly he dropped out and that's sort of what it is for, like, a lot of, 
like this entire or those entire two events because like this outside of the lcq which is going to be happening later in february which is going to be a bloodbath you know the last qualifier for before the capcom cup every like this is for a lot of people realistically their last chance to try and like claim that last spot for the capcom cup because there there's just way like the the whole seating and every or not just the seating but like that entire pool that's going to be playing and then lcq is going to be just like full of all of like the top dogs that couldn't find their mark to get in now or dropped like during the lcqs or anything especially since only two people can qualify per region like just it's going to be absolutely insane when that lcq comes up obviously i'll talk about it when it happens and obviously i'll do it in another like february recap when we eventually you know get to that point in time but i'm just really i'm really looking forward to when the lcq happens i'm really looking forward to when capcom cup happens because not only will that tell us who our definitive best street fighter 6 player is but it'll also you know have a man walk away with a million dollars to his name maybe it goes to knuckle dude and he can start paying off his like tax debt which i think is the cre that that's probably one of my like favorite um storylines like to run or i don't want to say storyline but like that's like probably one of like my most like favorite i i, I wouldn't want to call it like a, a tidbit or a fact but like literally after he won the us east else or um cpt man goes for like his post win interview and it's like man i'm doing this so i can pay off my like tax debt and that is the funniest thing ever i just think that's absolutely like hilarious so Shout out to Knuckle Doo. Um, shout out to everybody that like tried the hardest in the LCQ. I really uh, want to try and do, or I really hope to see you guys um, during the LCQ. Uh, like I, I just really hope um, you know that final spot. Whoever gets it, oh well, it, it's obviously deserved. And whatever happens during the Capcom Cup, best believe I will be there to like talk and show it off and like you know just keep you guys in the loop and keep you guys updated on that because when that comes out that is most definitely going to shake the entire like the entire spear of the fgc and i'm calling it right now tekken 7 you know right off the heels of um tekken 8 tekken 7 it had its final send off with the tekken world tour finals you know tekken 7 really good game yada 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 everybody we're done playing it we are finally free from the shackles of tekken 7 we can now only play that game as like a side tournament or like in fun little like get togethers we no longer have to play it like competitively on like or on a big main stage competitive scope anymore we're good um however what's not good or i guess you know depending on your standpoint what's it what is good is the fact that this tekken world tour uh it also got invaded by chipotle i don't know if you guys have seen in like the cpts and evo and everything just chipotle has been like big sponsoring the fgc for like a while i don't even know when this started uh, i remember when this started back in like evo i don't know how long this has been happening for um, cause I think it was like Jay Bailey or somebody said that this was going on like way later, but Chipotle has just been sponsoring the like big, the biggest FGC events that have been like going on as of recent they sponsored Evo. They've been sponsoring, uh, the Calcom pro, uh, like tour circuit and everything. They're, uh, sponsoring the Tekken world tour tournaments and everything. Um, I didn't see them at Frosty Fausting or I don't remember seeing them at Frosty Fausting, but I don't know if they're doing that. Uh, I guess not, apparently. But Chipotle's just been, like, digging their hands into the FGC for, like, a big while. And I don't know what sparked this on. But um, I guess it's best that, like, they did it and not, like, another company. Like, I don't know, like, McDonald's or Burger King or something. I mean, I, I don't really eat Chipotle, so I don't really care all that much. I just think it's kind of interesting that it's, like, Chipotle of all fast food companies that are like okay yeah you know let's throw let's throw a hadouken let's fight ryu and ken and like i think it's just interesting I, I sort of wonder what their end goal is here but i guess we won't know until like they either cut the plug or you know i i talk with the chipotle ceo and i get his opinion on what he's doing but Tekken 7, we no longer have to play it uh, competitively anymore that's no longer going to be our our main stages for evo which is good or i guess bad depending on like what your standpoint is either way everybody's probably going to be or everybody is going to be moving on to tekken 8 so it doesn't really matter tekken 7 is now done we are gone with it guilty gear this is one of the funniest like things that i want to talk about right now because i'm actively a part and like still developing in what is going on with it 
and I, I'm not gonna be able to do this justice, so right now, I apologize, but, Guilty Gear Strive had possibly one of its biggest tournaments to date, being the Cold Shoulder Clash, and, Saying that, saying that, like, you know, as a regular sentence, it's like, oh, okay, cool, that's fine, what's so funny? It is funny because of the fact that it was hosted by Jay Easy, and you might not know who Jay Easy is, right? But what, just this, this entire storyline, I've been wanting to talk about this for a minute, I'm about to lock in. So, I don't remember when the first tweet is, but Jay Easy, rapper, um, from New York, right, like, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's, like, around the area that I'm in, so, like, if we ever link up, I gotta get him on the podcast someday, if I ever link up with him, like, I'll let you guys know, but, Jay Easy, rapper from, uh, like, close to my area, right, close to, like, New York-ish area, right, does a show, and, you know, he's going off, he's being charismatic, he's a, he's actually a really cool dude, um, like, just from all of the stuff that I've seen and everything, of, like, interviews and whatnot, he seems like a really cool guy, but, He goes off, he's being charismatic, he's signing a bunch of fan stuff, you know, he's like being cool, crisp, you know, like doing the the, the standard rapper thing. He goes and signs a fan's 3DS, right? And you would think, oh, a fan brought in a 3DS, that's kind of wild, I don't understand why, but like, whatever. And this fan is wearing a Bridget cosplay. And the crazy thing about it is he posts this on his Twitter and TikTok, and effectively summons the entire guilty gear community all like in like within the span of two days and i was watching this live when it like when it was going on and everything and it was the craziest thing that was happening and so using this momentum jay easy starts streaming on twitch gets a discord channel that i'm also like i'm a part of so if you see me in there you know say hi um, he gets a Discord channel, he starts that Discord channel up, he starts, uh, streaming on Twitch, he's streaming Guilty Gear on Twitch with a bunch of high-level players, I remember seeing Adventure in there, that was absolutely crazy, if you don't know Adventure, um, CEO Champion plays Jacko, plays Anji, really cool guy, um, he plays Adventure, he plays, like, a bunch of other, um, like, top, top-tier players and whatnot, and he hosts a Guilty Gear Strive tournament, and, I I didn't want to enter into the tournament because I've been like slowly falling off of gear for like a tiny bit, but I was like, oh, I'm probably gonna like maybe enter into the tournament, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I'll I'll think about it. Thinking it was just gonna be like only a tournament wide thing, which by the way, the the players in that um Discord are all like really really cool people, really sick. A lot of them are really chill. If you are if you do find yourself in there, then like I really do suggest like going to chat with like a pe- some people, not only just to play gear, but like just anything. They're all really nice people, but. I I was like, oh, okay, cool, I'm probably, like, I'm not gonna, like, compete, I'm just gonna, like, sit out, just, like, observe what happens, and I see top players start joining the server, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of wild, I wonder what they're here for, and I'm like, whatever, it's fine, it's nothing, they run through the tournament, and top, top two, top two uh, out of top eight, I see tempest nyc and umi show and my yo my draw drops because i think it is absolutely insane that the biggest i think it had like a thing of like a thousand like 1.5 like um players in it which is absolutely insane i just think it is the craziest thing ever that we are currently in the timeline where a rapper just just so happened to sign a fan's 3ds who just so happened to be in bridget cosplay and then just so happened to post it to again get the entire guilty year community under this man's wing and bring him up to newfound publicity and that is the wildest and funniest thing to ever happen like during this year and the fact that this led to quite possibly like the biggest um guilty gear tournament for like this game's lifespan not counting things like evil and whatnot is i i think that's even crazier i think that's like quite possibly uh that that's quite possibly like the funniest thing to like happen for this game i don't know if he has another thing in the i don't know if he's gonna like do it again there's talks that there's gonna be a tekken 8 tournament so if there are any big tekken 8 um 
like players and whatnot you know if little majin decides to join just so that he can like clean house and then like get first place in this tekken 8 tournament that would be absolutely insane so majin if you do please yo yo i i gave the idea out i'm just saying you know get somebody else get um uh archlon ash out here you know get like knee out here it would be very funny it would be very cool uh but nah whatever happens outside of that i'm just along for the ride that would be like that would be really uh that would be really funny um frosty faustings like go, like not talking about the jay-z stuff anymore frosty faustings frosty faustings was this weekend it was from the 24th to the 25th if i remember correctly or the 23rd to the 25th um i tried to like stick in for a couple of things it was like the first like ma or huge major for the year if memory serves correct I stick. I tried to stick in for like a tiny bit of things. Uh, I did get to see Persona 4 Arena Ultimate Match uh, live, so shout out Mighty Joy for winning that. Guilty Gear Strive. I stayed up till I think like 2 a.m. watching that. Shout out Umi Show. Street Fighter 6. I didn't see live, but um, I did see the vod for that. So shout out Punk. Uni 2. Shout out Defiant. And Tekken 8. Um, shout out Scully B. I think he played King, if memory serves right. And uh, Defiant played like Lundrakia and then Punk. Obviously, Punk played uh, Kami. You know, makes like normal, normal character um, plays and whatnot. The thing that had me like really stoked was the fact that I did not know that Umi Show had a sin. Apparently, that was like that was news to me. I remember I was um, I texted one of my friends about it, and then I was like, oh, like mid thing at 2 a.m. This dude is sleeping. I'm like, yo, Umi has a sin, and then he gets back to me at like 9 a.m. When I'm knocked out, like, oh yeah, I didn't, yeah, she had that for a while apparently. So that that was news to me. Um, that whole set with uh her and Tempest, as always, really really good stuff, really high level things. If you have the chance, once again, if you always have, if you have the time and you have the chance to always go back to like review whatever high level tournament footage you can, because getting high level games like that, like use it as knowledge, use it for knowledge checks, just use it as like material to study up on, because obviously fighting games are in part doing your homework in part being able to get the right answer out in time and in part actually showing up so that you can do the other two that's listed but that's sort of it for the like tournament scope of things we didn't really have like all too many the main thing like uh i said earlier being frosty felstings which was the like big major for this month that only happens later and then the capcom cbt stuff which like is probably a or i would say to be more of the more important thing to come up with you know the tech and world tour stuff i it, it wasn't really that important uh mostly because of the fact that like it was right under the heels of tekken 8 so for me at least it was like oh well i'm not gonna show up because they're playing tekken 7 i don't care about that tekken 8's about to drop right around the corner there's no real reason for me to like have to worry about this game anymore you know but shout out to all of the winners contestants everybody that came out did their thing did their part you know is always making strides in the fgc doing it big doing it like living it up and whatnot and even if you didn't you know even if you were just like a spectator a watcher a commentator or just like someone out in the stands who's holding out like a sign or something you're still doing your part you're still out here doing your thing i congratulate i commend all of you for doing that and i appreciate that Round three. So last and certainly not least, we will be getting to the future. What is in store, or rather, what do we have to look forward to in like maybe a week, two weeks, like or like next year or something? Because there is some stuff here that like we either don't really know what's gonna happen, or you know we have some stuff like a year or like in advance. It's mostly just like DLC, not really games or anything, but still, I feel like it's important enough to really like talk about and like see see what the future holds, you know? So. February 6th, uh, we got the, actually, yeah, February 6th, they will be announcing the EVO lineup for 2024, happening, uh, you know, July 26th to the 28th of that same year. If we look at the uh, EVO lineup for 2023 right now, we can see, hold up as I pull this up. We can see that it was Street Fighter 6, King of Fighters 15, Multi Blood Type Lumina, Guilty Gear Strive, Mortal Kombat 11, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Tekken 7, and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Pretty standard lineup. 
Uh, I really don't think anything is going to be changed out here outside of the stuff that needs to be changed. So, for example, Mortal Kombat 1 is obviously going to be changed to, or Mortal Kombat 11 is going to be changed to Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, King of Fighters is staying, Street Fighter 6 is staying, Dragon Ball is staying, Tekken 7 is going to be changed to Tekken 8. Multi Blood Type Lumina is most definitely going to be changed to Under Night Ember uh, 2 because it, it makes sense. Like, normally there always is, like, some sort of. Um, French bread game that's up here on the main stage since like a while actually and it normally does swap between like either a melty or not a melty but like it, it swaps between like whatever the most recent uh undernight game is or in this case like since we didn't have a undernight game for a while it just swapped to type lumina so type lumina it'll probably take the reins off and then like you know it, it's tournament run it it was respectable i didn't really care all too much about it but you know undernight imberf the big dog is getting back in his throne Lil bro just had to had to keep the seat warmed up so big bro could take this step you know he can step back in so melty blood is most likely going to get swapped out for lumina and Guilty Gear Strive and then Ultimate War vs. Capcom 3, those are probably going to stay the same. Street Fighter 6 is still obviously in its infancy, so, you know, we're not going to get any change of that from there. King of Fighters, since there hasn't been any sort of news on the new Garo game that should or that got announced last EVO, that'll probably not get, like, any sort of change or anything there. Multi Blood, like I've been saying, normally gets swapped out for, um, like, whatever the most recent French Bread game is, so we're most likely going to see that. Guilty Gear is still very much in its infancy, going strong after three years. Marvel vs. Capcom has been going strong for, like, what, like, 20 years, I want to say? I don't know. Marvel's old. Marvel is very much an old game. Tekken as well, obviously, you know, that's getting swapped out. And then Fighters, you know, another team-based fighter, just to, like, sort of keep the balance somewhat there. Uh, like I've, or not like I said, but, or actually no, like I did say back in like the last EVO video when I initially covered the lineup for the 2023 year, I'm most likely only going to stick around for Street Fighter 6, Tekken 8, and then like maybe Gear or maybe, uh, maybe Marvel. Um, I'm obviously going to be there in person. I haven't uh, had the chance to buy my tickets yet, but obviously I'm, I'll, I'll let you know when I do that, uh, because I will not shut up about the fact that I brought my tickets. Um, so I'll let you guys know when I buy my tickets. Um, I might actually compete this time around. Maybe I'll play some Street Fighter 6. Maybe I'll play some Guilty Gear. Maybe I'll play some Tekken. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta come to that decision on whether or not I want to, like, make a, f I don't want to say make a fool of myself, but if I want to, like, show out and then, like, try, but then that means I actually have to, like, grind super hard, and I also really don't want to grind super hard, especially not for any of those three games, not because they're not fun, but I don't want to get to that point where, I make it not fun by grinding like super hard, especially since I'm already at the point of like Street Fighter where I've made it to like I'm in like the mid ish section of like the skill hierarchy. Like my highest um rated character right now, JP, he's like plat five, and I'm fine with that. Like just barely scraping under like diamond ish SL, uh, echelon for that character. I'm cool with that. Same with Manon. My, my Manon is uh plat 3 if memory serves me right i'm fine with that tekken 7 i haven't played rank yet but i probably will like once i have more knowledge under my belt and everything with my character and then guilty gear uh, strive you know as i say time and time again i'm a high like uh floor 10 like low celestial ish player i always get into like the celestial um ranking thing but i never actually like stay in there i think you know the whole celestial tower and like just the tower in general is a really bad system for like a rank thing but whatever we make do i scrape under like that celestial is level the thing is just like consistency and actually like staying on top and like continuously playing on but we'll we'll see whatever the evil lineup is uh we'll see whatever stuff we actually have for evil when that actually comes out the like i said we will be getting whatever the lineup will be for february 6th what i said i just think is what the lineup is going to be because that just logistically makes the most sense and you know the tournament is actually going to be happening the 26th to the 28th in las vegas nevada so i'll keep you guys in the loop for that i'll make sure like whatever stuff gets um announced or like anything changed once again i'll keep you guys in the loop you know I'll, I'll just let the information will come to me and then i will let you all also get parted onto the same information as well ed ed our biggest street fighter the newest street fighter 
Um, the Street Fighter that everybody is really looking forward to, mostly because the fact that his entire gameplay back in Street Fighter V was like sort of the predecessor for modern controls, so they want to sort of see how they transfigure and transmutate his old style of like what was modern controls to the new style of okay are we going to make him a more traditional fighter or are we going to keep that same like sort of pseudo modern controls ish for his play despite all of the other characters who came up and sort of built the building blocks for his gameplay not having those same like mechanics and everything like for example if you guys are uh someone older chun li she normally has um lightning click oh, whoa lightning kicks as a like mash input honda he normally has hundred hands as a mash input those two things are no longer mash input it's their quarter circle forwards if i if memory serves right um i don't play chun and i don't play yonda but i'm pretty sure they're quarter circle forward and then like punch and kick respectively uh we haven't seen what a negative edge button will look like but the character for negative edge which was jury for street fighter 4 um she obviously doesn't have it anymore but then again that's also because like jury in general has just been changed a lot from her admissions from four to five to six taking you know aspects from everything and then sort of building upon it as well as adding in some new things so there's that but either way ed is going to be coming out late ish february i speculate it's probably going to be around the time of the um last uh, capcom qualifiers which is going to be february 16th to the 18th or the capcom cup which is going to be february 25th striking it right at like the end point for um february as well because that just that makes sense that he would drop during that time speaking about the capcom cup obviously we have the capcom cup that will be coming out february 25th uh that's like i've been saying it's going to be one of the biggest street fighter tournaments simply due to the prize money and the stake of it being a whole 1 million to whoever first place is and a 500,000 to whoever second place and then like you know it trickles down from like third fifth seventh eighth whatever that is going to be the biggest street fighter tournament to date period that amount of prize money is bringing in so many people and so many people have already fallen to the wayside simply because of how stacked this tournament is this is bringing people from the wayworks who didn't play street fighter 5 who have been or who have been playing street fighter 5 like in silent grinding not really going to tournaments and bringing them out into the wayworks so that they can get their chance at this 1 million like i said with um knuckle do it's all funny and everything you know like haha i gotta pay off my debt but like a million dollars is a million dollars like for a lot of people that's an unfathomable amount of money and the fact that a single person is going to be able to make this amount of money in the fgc is actually insane and i i really quickly want to prep or i want to stress the fact that like is the fgc itself like capcom that is getting this one million dollars to a like fighting game player right because i want to i want to stress that enough or I, I don't think I'm stressing that enough because esports as a whole, they've already, they've done like big million, two million, three million dollar like prize pools. Like, um, Fortnite, Bunga, he got like a three million dollar, he won like a three million dollar cup by himself. That man had three million dollars to his name. You know, let's not talk about taxes and everything and like whatever other garbage he has to go through in order to get that like registered to his name. That man won three million dollars to himself by playing fortnite the fgc has not seen not a lick of money like that period we don't operate on like a like huge large scale like that and we're just now getting into that upper echelon and like i talked about during evo or like i talked about during that evo time of oh you know, the FGC right now, we're thriving, we're making really good strides, we're getting a lot of new people in, meanwhile, esports and everything as, like, a whole collective is sort of dying off, and it's due to that fact of, like, our grassroots nature and everything, this is the first really big time that, like, someone from our community, our circle, like, just, like, one of us is going to be getting, like, some really top-tier, like, prize money, and I feel like this is probably going to, like, have shockwaves that echo throughout the entirety of the fgc just as a whole so not only on the fact of like this just being like a capcom thing but just as an fgc thing as a whole this is going to have really big like i don't want to say consequences but this is going to be huge and this is very much going to like change the whole like outlook and everything for prize money and whatnot like 
obviously we're still going to have our hundred thousands or ten thousands and whatnot that like parade a majority of the space but like the fact that we now have like the resources even if it's just for like a single year thing now that we have the resources to do something as big as like a million and capcom is willing to actually show that out especially just like just for capcom this isn't even like something like evo this is capcom cup this isn't evo this isn't like um ceo this isn't ceo taku this is cap this is the capcom cup this is a major yes but like it's not like um i wouldn't say it's a major on the same scale as like something as like ceo or um you know like otaku or falsy frostings or like whatever this is specifically the capcom cup and like like i'm just saying man this is going to have like really big um this is going to echo throughout the fgc for a while and i feel like whoever does win that um million congrats to Lan like congratulations to them they've probably like worked like blood sweat and tears for it and they deserve every cent that they get from it um as to who i think is probably gonna win it i don't really know i think like it's probably like put a safe bet on it it's probably going to be someone like for you know yeah just to be safe i'll probably just say it's going to be someone like mena rd especially since like since his showing from street fighter 5 he has been a very strong player and from that from street fighter 5 to street fighter 6 obviously that has not changed you know um throughout his entire run with things like he didn't even need to play in the um ECPT because he already qualified for Capcom Cup. My brother was like, "All right, ah, right, y'all can have fun with that. I'm already good. He's solid. He's been grinding it out in like the French um Capcom like pro circuit thing or whatever. That always happened at like 3 a.m. So I really didn't care about like watch. It was way too early in the morning for even though I was up like I it was way too early in the morning for me. Like I was way past the point of like wanting to go see like really good um Street Fighter and also a lot of it was like in French and whatnot. So I'm like, whatever, y'all could have fun. Whatever happens, I know my boy Manor D, he on top. So he he's been on the grind. He's been on the grind for a while. Um like he he's been giving it his all obviously so whoever i or that's why i think like is probably going to win it it might be an upset it might be knuckle do it might be um tokido it might be whoever else i don't know and that's sort of the beauty of it it's so open-ended because all of these uh like players and everything are all top tier and they all bring something unique to the game that they like it, they can't really be replicated and if it is it's not really like them so whoever wins Shout shouts out to them. Like this is past me congratulating future whoever wins the Capcom Cup. More power to you. Whatever happens in the FGC now, I feel like it's gonna have like really big, uh, really big reigns, and it's gonna like really elevate us to a new era of like publicity and then being like oh okay well now since we're starting to get like million dollar cups and everything even though we were more on the slow like uptake to it all um this is still like we're now starting to make like esports level like money and whatnot and like we're finally starting to get like the recognition and everything that like we've been deserving but whatever happens whatever happens happens it's gonna be cool i really can't wait for it um 2b 2B is dropping for our, or yeah, Grand Blue. Grand Blue is dropping their second character being 2B from the Near Automata series. She will be dropping February 20th along with more DLC in August and May. 2B is a very interesting character to drop, more specifically due to the fact that this is her second outing in a fighting game, being her first is Soul Calibur 6, where she was also a top tier. I'm not saying, or I'm saying also a top tier, like we know how she's going to play. She could very much be like a low tier character or anything. I don't know. But I think it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of interesting that um, Psy Games and Arxis are choosing 2B for their second representative for their DLC. I obviously can't wait, and I'm most likely, or I'm using that as an excuse to wait for me to get back into Grand Blue so that I can play her and then as i'm playing her i'm like okay i'm starting to have fun with the game now i'm starting to i'm starting to actually like it but when 2b drops obviously i'll talk about it i'll talk about like however her gameplay or how her gameplay if she's high tier low tier just talk about grand blue in general whatever when that happens that happens i'm really hyped for 2b and just in general because like grand blue has been like very much on the up and up for like a while and i'll probably talk about that in like the next episode but grand blue has been on the up and up for like a while after 
um, rising drop. It's just been like consistently going and going and going, which it honestly deserves because Grand Blue, in hindsight, was a really good game, but due to a lot of circumstance, it did not have the time to shine. And now that it actually does, now that it has rollback, now that it has like all of these characters and everything, now that it is a more polished game with a lot more to like sort of give to everybody and a lot of people are like starting to see like, man, this game actually really is fun or man, this really is a really good game. We have the Arc System World Tour that's going to be happening soon. I forget the date. I don't have it up here. This is just like off the cup. I don't have it written. But we do have the Arc System World Tour event happening soon that is also going to hold Grand Blue and um, Guilty Gear Strive as well. So when that eventually happens, obviously we'll have more information to go off of and like talk about that for then. But that that's going to be something that I'm looking forward to as well. In March, and this is sort of also hitting, like, little speculatory, like, I guess, territory, I don't know. I, I don't know if you want to call it that, but in March, we potentially have, or actually, no, let me talk about the tournament first. So, we have the Street Fighter Six Red Bull Kumite. If you don't know what a Red Bull Kumite is, you know what a Red Bull Kumite is, because this is another really big major that normally happens for Street Fighter or any other big, like, games like this. I, I know it mostly just happens for Street Fighter, where they go and fight in, like, a, a big cage, and it's, like, actually, like, a cage match. It's, like, probably one of the sickest things that, like, um these tournaments do and i really do enjoy like it's all like marketing uh like uh theming and everything but we have the red bull kumite and if you go and look at what the red bull kumite says on its uh like marketing posters and whatnot it says that it will be running on season two of street fighter 6 and this can't be a typo because there's no way that you accidentally type out um, season 2 of Street Fighter 6, meaning that they have to deliberately be doing this, because there isn't really a way that you can type, like, or you can accidentally typo that entire world out, so, I don't know what that in thousand, like, I don't know a thousand percent what that necessarily entails, whether or not we'll be getting, um, Akuma, like, around the same time that we get Ed, due to him, you know, in order for, uh, Akuma to be tournament legal, I think it would have to be, like, a time span of two weeks, and there's no way that they would announce the Red Bull Akuma, or they would announce, um akuma during the red bull kumite and then still say that they're operating on season two of street fighter six or that after the ed release will also be getting like the actual season patch because if i remember correctly we're only supposed to have like i think six month periods before we get like a major patch for or a major patch for street fighter there's a lot of ways that this can be interpreted the way that i'm going to interpret it is that we are going to be like you know potentially getting akuma around like mid to late march that way or no it would have to be like most definitely um in march we have no because i don't think there's been like or hold up i think there's a date for the red bull kumite i didn't write it but, uh write it down uh red bull kumite I wonder what the word Kumite even means, but if we go and look at the Red Bull Kumite for 2024, right? We got the events, March 16th to 17th, all right? So this is going to have to drop, like, early March then, like, meaning we're probably going to get, like, Ed, and then on top of Ed, we are also going to be getting Akuma, like, dropping, like, probably within either that week or, like, to uh, oh another week between that because the kumite is 16th to the 17th in order for akuma to be tournament legal and specifically say that they would be running on season two he would have to release i think within like a two-week time period before the tournament actually starts or at least a week time period before the tournament starts assuming that they're running on the evo rules so we would have at least like maybe a week to two weeks for both ed and akuma to drop between that time frame or I could just be interpreting this, like, entirely wrong, and this is only, like, the patch, like, the Season 2 patch we'll, we'll be getting, and not, like, the character. But that also sort of doesn't feel right, because why would you drop the Season 2 patch, but not drop a character with the patch? It, I don't, there's a lot of ways this can, like, really be interpreted, and I really don't like it. So I guess we'll just sort of wait and see, like, around the 16th and the 17th of March, you know, and see, like, whatever we actually get.
Uh, we have more DLC lined up for Tekken 8, or actually, no, we have DLC lined up for Tekken 8 that got announced a while back, or not a while back, but like a, a tiny bit ago, with the spring release featuring Eddie Gordo, and he also has a not-so-good-looking haircut. And I wanted to talk about this, I wanted to like give this its own episode initially, uh, which was probably going to be this episode, but I really don't, I don't think it would have been, it would have been, like, the best thing to give, like, this entire issue, like, its own, like, full episode to go through it, but at the same time, I also felt like it was realistically an important enough topic to, you know, actually bring up and decide to talk about. Basically, the spark notes of, like, that big episode that I was going to drop is that Eddie Gordo's hair is, like, sort of a thing of, like, modern mi i don't want to say misrepresentation but like not the best representation for african americans due to it being like the kill you know the killmonger haircut it's been used like time and time again and it's being given to characters who it either doesn't benefit or just straight up doesn't make sense big example is miles miles morales he did not need that killmonger haircut and developers are just sort of like slapping it on to any like african american or afro latino character they can simply because of the fact of like oh okay cool they saw back in like 2018 2019 or however long ago um black panther was like 2018 they i think it is 2018 yeah back in 2018 they saw that we really enjoyed it and we liked this representation because it wasn't just like either straight bald stupidly large afro or dreads it was like something different and now we've just been getting this over and over again and it's falling into the same trap of okay now that we're like we have another hairstyle like let's go the african community we got like one we got another hairstyle like under our belt but this isn't really representation it's sort of like i don't want to say it's misrepresentation because it's still like i guess in the ballpark it's just sort of missing the mark for where it actually like hits and that, that's all i really wanted to say i feel like you know if you get like a culture consultant or like somebody on to like just actually like talk about what good representation would be like for this character it would like possibly change the or like it, i feel like it would fix the issue a lot more and not like sort of have developers miss the mark time and time again by giving characters like you know stupid haircuts like oh every black character now has to have the killmonger cut or oh every asian uh character now has to have like dyed hair or something look that up that's also a trend that's also um happened a while ago like that that's a big one that that's a big one asian characters with dyed hair um one one of the I don't want to say one of the big proponents, but one of the first ones that comes to the top of my head for that one is um the girl Yumiko from Deadpool two. That I don't know why I immediately go to her, but like that was a big one. Uh and then there's also like this is a random one, but like the chick off of sixteen. I know there's an image that like showed it off. It was like one with all of the characters with the Killmonger haircut and one that had like all of the characters with like um like dyed or it was asian characters with dyed hair and like it they were going band for band they were going from uh, one for one but pretty much we have like that that entire like topic of representation what good representation looks like what not so good representation looks like i think this is a case of not so good representation and we'll probably just see more along that um seasons of more dlc a lot more dlc actually uni 2 we got more dlc announced for that three dlc characters being zuki which is going to be coming out on august of 24 ogre which is going to be coming out of february of uh, 2025 and azumi which is going to be coming out of august 2025 however these release dates may change i barely know anything about like azuki and ogre outside of the fact that i think they're aligned with like some faction and then like um izumi i have no like knowledge of or whatnot well, i i don't know man i know enough about like uni lore to like kind of understand it but we'll i guess we'll know more about these characters when they actually drop um project l we actually don't have any news for this um outside of the fact that there's going to be a playable demo at evil japan which i think is like august around like the august 20s it might be like 24 to 26 i'll, I'll have to like check the date again and like I also mentioned, we have the Arc World Tour, which is going to be March 21st to the 23rd. I might not be able to cover it since I'm going to be going to a convention around that time frame, literally that weekend. But if anything interesting, if anything pops up, obviously I will let you guys know. And that is the recap for January 2024.
overall we had a really good start to the year we have a lot of really good stuff i feel like january is more just going to be the prep month for all of the things that are going to be coming up especially with february february is most definitely going to be capcom's month that's going to be where capcom is probably like hit the hardest and where like they're going to be like sitting out and probably sending out like their biggest hitters and everything we still do have a lot of things to you know show up and everything in like march april may and whatnot so obviously i will cover that and i will be here to cover all other like not fighting game news in general because like i want to sort of supplement like these little recap things as opposed to like me doing the constant news segments like over and over every week trying to like catch up because i would do it and then like record it and then be like oh i gotta re-record it because like new stuff came out and that was like sort of one of the big issues like because i wanted to drop an ep or something like this uh, around the time that the game awards came out and i recorded it with uh Tenkiro. Uh, shout outs to him, but we recorded it. It was around the time that like they almost dropped um, I had to do like one more segment with them didn't get the chance to the game awards came out All of the stuff that we talked about ended up being either irrelevant or not really like supplementing to as much and it, it just was like a big thing so I want to supplement that not have it be as big as or not do the news segments as often as I would normally do and sort of just have the recaps be more of the things that we like you know have for our new stuff and then just like recap that if more important things do come up then like obviously i will talk about them as they like come up but as it stands right now this is going to be like the main format for getting the news unless it's like something really big or really important or if it like fits into whatever segment i'm talking about and like that news just so happens to come about i'll talk about it but that's pretty much it i feel like that's where i can like cut it like pretty solidly a really good episode for today episode 27 finally got it under the books we finally got it underway and we finally got it in in the head in the brain in the ears one in in through one ear out through the other i don't know how that saying goes uh, that might be it but whatever thank you all so much for tuning in i really do appreciate it when i say it i really do say that i love you guys so much for like allowing me to ramble on about stuff my throat hurts so much because i have not had to speak like this for a while but man i really do appreciate it i really really do appreciate it like just being able to sit here ramble go on and like just spew about like fighting games and whatnot um go play Tekken 8 go play Tekken 8 go play uni go play grand blue street fighter if you have a fighting game you want to play go play it we're still in like that early like actually no we're far past christmas we are not doing that anymore but like if you have any fighting games that you want to play go and play them fighting games are amazing video games are amazing i love you take care of yourselves uh go go check the socials i almost forgot to drop that um go check the socials you know where to find me at um z-g-i-e-s-k-y-w-a-r-d on um uh, twitter and yeah that's it if you have anything else that you want to say like go tweet at me or something uh i appreciate it i love you guys take care of yourselves take care of your family and go out and play fighting games and i'll see you all in the next one thank you all so much for tuning in and peace